Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Listen and grow as Dell questions the status quo, encourages you to think differently, and empowers you to make a better life. Get ready as Dell challenges core beliefs, seeks the truth, and reveals the roadmap to the lifestyle you really want. And now your host, multi-millionaire, national award-winning investor, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. Welcome to the Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Today, my friends, I'm going to discuss how to think about things that you run into in the world. The basic ideals that you live with and how you work your way through all of the minutiae that's thrown at you each and every day, from marketing to advertising to belief systems, positive and negative, and so on and so forth. And um, I just it just came to me that maybe, and I used to do this a lot more in the radio show. You know, remember, I've been here for 30 years, but I used to do it a lot more where I would explain to you how I came to conclusions and what I saw to come to that conclusion. And in doing so, hopefully teach those of you who have the capacity to analyze things, to analyze them more thoroughly. Now, I say capacity because some people just don't have that mindset. They just don't analyze anything. They just, you know, pull the plug of whoopee and ah. And they run and jump in the pool. I mean, I've seen that. I was uh, at lunch the other day, and a very nice young lady is my waitress. And, you know, I give her all the kudos in the world. And so um, I just, I had to ask her because she was so bubbly. She's like, yeah, how are you, how, welcome, how are you doing today? Oh, today's the best day of my life ever. And I'm like, Wow. And everybody sat down to the bar, yeah, today's the best day of my life ever. And, you know, I thought, okay, maybe she had a great day today. And then I came back the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. Every day it was the same thing. And she she never put down that facade of being very, very, very happy and very motivated. And she was jolly on the spot and great waitress and brought me everything I wanted faster than anybody else. Remembered my order. Just a really good bartender slash waitress. Perfect person for it. And um, she's uh, well-preserved. I can't tell how old she is, to be honest with you. I think she's probably, my guess is in her 40s, but she probably looks like she's in her 30s. But just the other day, I just asked her, just I had to, in my mind, you know, there's that analytical part of the brain goes, hey, have you ever been married? And I was just, you know, I was curious about what I was trying to get to, and I for further explain it to her is I, I'm just trying to figure out with your massively positive personality and bubbly, exuberant type qualities, what kind of guy can put up with you 24 seven? I mean, you know, just, it's, you got to wear people out. And I, you know, I didn't say it to her in a mean, rude way. I just, I was like complimentary. I mean, you know, who can keep up with you kind of thing? I mean, and she says, no, I've never been married. I said, well, do you have any kids? She goes, five. I said, you have five kids. She said, yeah, yeah, you know, I've lived together with guys, but we never really got there. Uh, I said, guys, how many guys make up the five kids? And she says, three different guys. And then I thought about it. Okay, now this is me in the back of my mind, not saying this to her, but in my mind, I'm going, hmm, I think it's a little clearer now. That energy, that exuberance, that overwhelming positivity has done a couple things for her. Number one, worn out every relationship she's had because nobody else can keep up to her. Uh, And I asked her, I said, were the other guys like you? She said, oh, no, the guys were really, you know, they're laid back or they're they're just, they didn't, they weren't go-getters. Well, you know, if you've got someone that's a go, I'm going to kill myself to support our family and take care of us. And you're going to hook up with a guy that's not that way because two of you together aren't going to fit, right? And so it's obvious she had to go get with guys that are just really low-key to put up with her to absorb all that energy type of thing. And uh, laughingly, I said to her, and and I said, how old are your kids? And she was there from like 10 to like 21. So then I knew she couldn't be in her 20s, although she looks young. 
you know, she had to be late 30s or 40s at least just to have a 21-year-old kid. And so I'm putting this picture together, and then I look at it, and I said, you know, let, let me just make a joke here. And I want this just to be a joke and light. But perspective, you say you're happier and that every day is better than the last. And I would ask, is that because you're happy because you got away from three relationships you didn't like? And, you know, she stopped smiling for a second. She stopped being bubbly for a second. She looked me straight in the face and she said, sadly, yes. That's exactly it. I like my freedom. I don't like being tied to some guy that's going to be like an anchor dragging behind me in my life. And I thought, man, there it is. When you look at situations like that, you can analyze them. You can figure out what has happened to that person's life. And you can rationalize it and you can analyze it. And you can come pretty close many times. Not every time, but many times you come very close to figuring out what this person's gone through and really what their driving force is in life. And so now I move on to the next story, which is I've been learning to play guitar again. If you listen the last couple of days, I've you know been mentioning that. And so I'm on YouTube taking lessons and looking at things on YouTube about how to do things that I've forgotten how to do and how to do things I never knew how to do. And there's ads that come up on YouTube. And this one ad came up where it was a real estate guru guy. And the guy was saying all the right stuff about, hey, you know, real estate will retire you. One great deal could retire you for life. And he's really, really right about that. One good deal could retire you for life. And he goes on and he's got, so I, I, I flip over to his ad, which I don't do very often, but every once in a while something's interesting. And I said, I got to hear what this guy's saying because he's in the same industry I am, self-help, real estate training. And so I listened to him go on and on because the reason it caught my attention because he's saying he, he had, it was how a commercial real estate deal can change your life. And he was talking about if you're one of these guys out there that have done a single family house or two and you're really ready to take the next step to get big and, you know, buy something huge that's going to make a difference. And remember, you don't have to have any money to do this. You don't have to have any credit to do the da da da. And all of a sudden, when he said all that, I could, uh, ooh, the hair went up on the back of my neck because I do this for a living. I know you have to have some money, you have to have some credit. You can't buy these things, right? A- unless you go in with somebody else who has all the money and all the credit, in which case they got to ask is, what do they need you for? Well, that becomes the, the question of the day. And so I listened to his old spiel, and there was stuff in there that just, you know, you could start to picture what this guy was all about. And uh, he, But he was saying, but, you know, you wanted to join one of the, you, ha- you were able to go out and find these deals, but you didn't have any money, didn't have any credit. So you decided to go join one of these real estate groups. And he said, that just doesn't work in the beginning. It might work later on when you're one of them. But until you're one of them, going to the group really doesn't work. You know, they're, they're not going to let you in. Well, what he's saying they're not going to let you in is because it costs money to get into those groups. And uh, he basically says, you shouldn't spend your money on those groups because you're not ready for those groups. Well, that's how, by getting into the group is how you learn and how you hang out with these rich people. And his concept was, you need those people to buy your deals from you. So now it's all, it's coming in clear here. He wants to wholesale or flip deals. That's what he's going to teach you how to do, right? He's going to wholesale or flip deals. And, uh, but, but you can't go join these courses because they're too expensive. So then he comes back and says, well, but I've got my own private network of people. And that private network is, is, I'm going to let you into that private network. I'm going to interview you. If you seem like you're really interested in doing this, I'm going to let you into that private network. And uh, then, uh, you you know, I will personally consult you. Now, this is where the story started going sideways a little bit on the deal. So I flipped over to watch that ad. It's just in the, these ads, they lead to one to another to another. So you just keep watching this elongated advertisement. I'm discussing a situation uh, of an ad that I saw in YouTube ad, and this guy was a real estate investor, and he says commercial real estate investor for, you know, 20, 30 years or whatever, 
and he's saying he's willing to help you personally. He gets down to this point like, look, you know, um, he he had this big, giant real estate training program for years. And so now I'll give you the guy's name. His name is Peter Conte. And I'd actually heard that name somewhere in the past. But what he was selling was wholesaling, flipping uh, houses is basically what that training program taught and or buying notes and from the bank. In other words, it was all the something for nothing, instantaneously, gratificationally diseased ideas from the midnight madness days. And he was out there marketing this stuff. Now, at that point, I said, you know, let me look this guy up since he's got a history. Let's find out because what I was interested in, by the way, in the whole spiel was, okay, if this guy's really got all these bird dogs, people that are out there looking for these deals that don't have any money, can't really buy them, I'd like to hook up with the guy and be the guy he's telling them in this ad that there is out there that will buy their deals. Now, I've already told you stories in the past where I've gone to these gurus and said I would be that guy, and they've always turned me down. And I'm saying, look, I'm the guy that's got the money. I can buy these deals. These guys are really finding these deals, right? And so I looked him up, and I found out a couple of things. And first of all, in his ad, he said that what had happened was he'd gotten an accident, and it hurt him really bad. So he was hurt so bad he couldn't do his business anymore, so he sold his business and got out of it. Well, when you look him up on the Internet, you find out that there was actually two or three other guys, or two other guys in the business with him, at least one, maybe two other guys in the business, and that he's gone and they still, they have the business. So maybe he sold out to his partners or whatever, but it's probably more along the lines of what the complaints were. The complaints were... Um, and you got to go in there and look up complaints on people. Look them up on me. I mean, just look them up on anybody you're ever going to do business with. And the complaints were pretty, you know, consistent about service. There was no service, and the promises were never what they were, you know, made out to be. One of the biggest problems was is that his his spiel is that if you find a good deal and bring it to him and he okays the deal, then he'll get somebody to buy it for you or he'll buy it from you. Well, the the complaint was. He never okayed any deals. He said, no, nah, that's just not an acceptable deal. So if you say no to every deal, and I've told my consultants this all the time, uh, you know, if you say no to every deal, there'll be no deals. You'll make no mistakes. You'll make no mistakes. It'll all be no deals. But the point really comes down to is that there are no deals getting done in his group or very few. Now, he gives a couple of examples, too, and uh, I don't think that's a lot, you know, but and I don't even know the circumstances of the of the deals because they could be anything. They could they could be just finders fees. They could be whatever. But the uh, the long story short is I'm looking at this thing trying to see if there's really an opportunity to make some money with this guy, right? And so if there's nobody buying these deals, if he's telling everybody there's people buying these deals and nobody's deals are getting bought, then there's probably nobody out there. He also says that there's no. He says one of the problems is he found that he had gotten away from, he had all these people, he had, you know, 17 different mentors and all this stuff, just like I have. And he said, you know, I got away from actually talking to people. He said, I'd meet people at the seminars and they'd say, hey, you changed my life. And I'd have to look at their name tag to know who they are. That's absolutely true. When you got 50,000 clients like I do, I don't know everybody. Then you're happy that your material helps somebody, right? Whether it's now that there's, you know, 20, 30, 50, I've over 100 employees that help people every day. So, yeah. Yeah, there's going to be people you don't know. And he said, but, you know, I was sad about that. So I wanted to go back to doing what I really like, which was personally helping people. Nah, what you're doing, sir, is you're going back to the position because you got no employees and you got no business that you're going to do the work yourself. But his promise was, I'll do the work with you. You'll get me. I will take you every step of the way. It's basically his word for word promise. Um, So I went and signed up for the thing to find out if that was actually true and to find out you know, what you get from it. And first thing he did was send me exactly like he said he doesn't do it, exactly like he said everybody else does do. He sent me to one of his underlings, a little $10 an hour phone answering guy or 15 buck an hour answering guy that's going to meet me for a quote unquote meeting to find out if I qualify. Whoever it is that they would hook me up with a meeting, it's good. they wouldn't have any idea what to say to me. Uh, there's no idea. So I could tell right away that there was a lot of problems with this guy's program. You need to look him up. I'm not going to say any of what I'm saying is a, a fact. So you look him up. You figure it out, right? I went through it. I found two or three complaint emails or websites that complain. And they very well could be somebody who is his competition, although I'm his competition. I've never heard of him. Um, 
but there may be somebody, you know, that's his competition complaining about him just to make it look bad. But whatever it is, right, the bottom line is that it's starting to fall apart. Then he's saying, you know, he'll buy these deals. So the next thing I do, and I do this with everybody, is I look up their net worth. By the way, you can look up my net worth, and I can't get my net worth on the Internet. I don't know what the heck you have to do to get your net worth on the Internet, but I don't know if you make claims about what it is, you know, and if so, I want to claim I'm a billionaire. <laughs> I'm not a billionaire, but ben, let me make that claim on the radio right now. I'm a billionaire. We'll see if that shows up on the Internet somewhere. Um, but this guy, you know, is saying he does all this stuff, and he's a real estate investor for 30 years and blah, 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 blah. And I looked up one place in his name and net worth, and it said he's worth $400,000. And another place I looked up his name, it said he's worth $100,000. So if one of those is right, one of them's wrong, or if there's an average between the two of them, if it's anything close to what that is, that's not even as much money as even my lowliest staff member has. I mean, it's just, it's definitely not the money if somebody knows how to make money in real estate, because he's talking about doing deals where you make a million dollars in a single deal, which is true. Then where's his million dollars, which tells me he doesn't actually do real estate deals. He's just selling seminars is what it basically comes down to. And um, so as I, I look at this and I see this, I wanted to talk to you about what he's selling. First of all, is he selling anything at all is the real question. And I would hesitate a guess to say, I don't think so, not much, since if you look it up again on the Internet, not me, but people are complaining that the product quality was terrible, the service was terrible, that nobody got back to you, that the written training classes were terrible. Uh, there was just really no, the content had no quality at all to it whatsoever. So that's what they're saying. Again, I'm not taking the course. I'm trying to get in there and see if this guy talked to me, but as of today, it was just the first time I tried, so I'm going to give him a chance to call me. Maybe he'll call me. Maybe somebody here this radio show that knows Peter and say, Peter, call Del Wamsley. Give him a call. By the way, you can email me at ask, A-S-K, askdel at L-U-I-N-C dot com. And Peter, if you're out there listening, man, give, give me an email, askdel at L-U-I-N-C dot com. Because if you really do have all these people that you're bird dogging all these deals to, I've got all the buyers. I've got hundreds of thousands of buyers Ah, no, wait a minute, I got 50,000 members. Wait, boy, that's an exaggeration. Caught me on my own lie. We'll be right back with the Dell Walmsley Radio Show. to creating the lifestyle you really want. Keep listening. The Del Wamsley Radio Show returns in moments. Successful Lifestyles Unlimited member retires in 10 months. The hardest part for me was to drop off my son, go to a job that I absolutely hated for five years, but know that that was a sacrifice that I needed to make, and then only be able to get to spend two hours with him after school before he had to go back to bed. So that's why once we started and we joined Lifestyles, we said, okay, we have a roadmap. We know what we're gonna do. And then a month later, we find out we're pregnant with baby number two, and we're like, okay, we gotta kick it up a notch. So that's how we were able to purchase four different properties and um, replace months. in 10 months, replace my income in 10 months so that whenever I finished maternity leave, I didn't have to go back to work. I think a, I think a couple weeks before she baby came out is when we closed on a fourplex and that was enough for her not to have to go back to work. Are you ready for your roadmap to real estate retirement? Attend the online free workshop just like Carolina did. Register at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Welcome back to the Del Wamsley Radio Show. Today we're talking about how to see through sales pitches, how to evaluate opportunities, so on and so forth. And I was talking about uh, an advertisement I saw in YouTube, and this guy uh, was talking about his course and how he was going to personally help everybody. And, you know, the bottom line is almost everything he said by the time he started his advertisement to the end of his advertisements and different layers of marketing that I went through to get, try to get to the program uh, contradicted each other. And, and the bottom line is what it's going to come down to is he's just selling 
it appears that he's just selling uh, some type of a training program, and the training program is based on wholesaling and flipping. And so what it basically comes down to is if you have no money at all and someone wants to sell you something, they're going to sell you an unrealistic expectation, a dream that um, you can go out there with no money and no credit and buy real estate and make millions of dollars. Now, the first thing you need to understand is almost everything in life that any salesperson sells you has happened at least once. That's where they got their sales pitch from. That's where they got their dot, their their numbers from. It's where uh, they may have one testimonial or two. It's happened. But you have to ask yourself, how does somebody teach something like that? And this is why I didn't. I don't teach it at all. I won't even allow it to be taught in my courses. Why would you teach something that only happens once every 10,000 transactions out there when I have 50,000 clients? I have to have something that happens. I was looking at our reports today. We sold, um, I got two different emails. Each one of them had five or six different apartment complexes that closed this month. I mean, you, you have to understand, we're, we're closing hundreds of deals. By the way, before we went to break, I said I have uh, hundreds of thousands of investors. No, we have 50,000 investors that have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest, millions and millions, really, of dollars to invest. And so I just got got ahead of myself with a little enthusiasm. And I think these guys get ahead of themselves, yet they leave it in the text. They don't take it back out again. So the idea here is that I can sell you a program based on one or two thing, one or two transactions that actually occurred and get you hyped up to go out and find this set of circumstances. When you find this set of circumstances, you then make an offer. Now, as he even admits in his pre-sale that he tried to do that and he got laughed off the street because he drove up in a broken down old car. I'll give you an example. Today, I made an offer. I'm sending the offer over in writing today. It's five, five giant pieces of real estate, and I'm offering a million dollars below the ask price, and it's an all-cash offer. So, you know, they're going to want proof of funds. They're not even going to consider that offer unless there's proof of funds. And you you would then go, well, da 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 let me get back with my people, and we'll see if we can get the da 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 you know. Guys, those kinds of incredible deals, a million dollars off the price, that happens for people that have the money. Now, if you were a part of a program like this and we taught you how to syndicate correctly and you had some seed capital to be able to go in and set up the companies and do the basics to start with, to raise the capital with with the partnerships by being educated enough to know how to do it correctly within the confines of a group like this, It can be done, and it has been done many, many times. But it's not going to happen if you come here with two cents. You know, you can't rub your fingers together and say, I don't have any money. Can I get in on payment plan? No, you can't. Why? Because success leaves clues, and one of the clues is money. And if you're not a person that, if you're a person that has no money at all, you've proven that in the past when tough decisions had to be made, you made the wrong decision. Now, why is that important? Well, that's not important to you as a as a broke person. You should be trying everything you possibly can, every theory, every idea, every way possible to get ahead, right? But every time you try it, when you blow more money. And so you ultimately keep yourself broke because you constantly try things that don't work. Successful people let other people fail and find the people who do succeed and copy them. They do not fail their way to success like so many self-help gurus try to tell you. They're telling you that because they're selling you a self-help package. And if you didn't believe that you could fail your way to success, you'd look at your own self and say, self, I failed at the last two, three, four things I've tried. If I buy another program, I'm just going to fail again. That's the self-conversation you'd have unless they told you No, 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 no. The most successful people in the world have failed multiple, multiple times. Yeah, I'll tell you, I failed. I wanted a straight A. I wanted straight A's when I went to college. I got a B in one very, very difficult class. I failed. If that's how you see failure, I failed in doing what I wanted to do and say, well, I learned what I learned from. I should have studied more instead of talking to the girl I really liked that was in the class. (sighs) On and on and on the same way. I've done things where the transactions were not that 
profitable. They weren't as good as I thought they'd be. But I was able to get out of the transaction, not lose any money, and keep going and not hurt my investable capital base. There is something about experience and learning. I've learned most of my failure by watching other members come in here and say, Dell, I did this and it just didn't work. Oh, I can see why. Uh, or, you know, I would tell them not to do something. They'd do it anyway, and I'd see it fail again. So I had a compound uh, recognition of failure, what it looks like in investing. But these people here are trying to get you. So what is the basis of all this? The basis is you are going to be a bird dog. That's what we call them. You're going to go out there and try to find these deals and try to convince somebody to sell you their property for a discount. And you're going to try to get them to sign a contract to that agreeing to that. Now, it's a whole lot in there. You can see, like, you have to know how to write contracts. You have to know how uh, to negotiate contracts. You have to know legalities and so on and so forth. And then what you're going to do is if you get a contract from them to you, you're going to then go sell that contract to somebody else uh, to buy the deal. And if that were actually what was happening in these, you know, these uh, bird dog type schools, there'd be nothing wrong with that if it actually worked. Uh, I have no problem with that. In fact, that's why I tried to get hold of the guy in the first place. Say, hey, and I've done this before in the past. Is how lifestyles got started. The guy said, hey, why don't you guys that know what you're doing come around and help these poor people who don't have any money and let them find the deals and you, you know, fund the deals with them. I said, I'll do that. And the guy said, get out of here. <laughs> so, you know, here's the deal, guys, is that I'm calling this guy saying, look, you got to know who I am. I'm the biggest real estate mentor in the country, bar none most well-known in the country, maybe in the world, bar none, as a mentor, not as a billionaire real estate owner, but as a mentor. And, hey, I want to buy your deals. In fact, I've got thousands of customers that want to buy your deals. Do you really have any deals? And see what the guy says. And if the guy, his name's Peter Conte, will call me or email me, I'd be happy to meet with him and see if he really does have any deals he wants to sell. My guess is he won't be contacting me unless he's contacting me with an attorney to try to sue me and say, you can't say all these things about me. But I'm not saying anything about him that other than, hey, this is my opinion of what I see from the outside. And this is what the other people from the Internet say. So you go look and make your own decision. In fact, I'm advertising for him. Think about that. I'm actually advertising. I bet more people hit his website. Uh, after hearing this radio show nationwide, then he'll get, he'll think, man, oh, I don't know, the ad I ran yesterday was great because look, uh, you know, 50,000 people hit my website to see who the heck I am. That's some incredible stuff. And it'll happen because that's how many people listen to these radio shows every day. Hundreds of thousands of people. So there it is, guys. The bottom line is, if you were to do this and if it worked, last point, You would get a transaction fee. Anybody who makes a living by transaction fees is nothing more than a glorified salesperson and is living from commission check to commission check to commission check. What does that mean? It means you'll never retire. And even if you were the greatest one of those in the world for 10, 15 years, like this guy said he was, now he's sitting there with a net worth, according to the Internet, of somewhere between $100,000 and $400,000, which in my book, that's less than I make in a month. So, you know, the bottom line, it just doesn't seem like flipping and wholesaling is the way to go. As far as this gentleman, I'm open to him calling me, set me straight. If he's really good, I'll get him on the radio and we'll get you all set up. Because the bottom line is, is that there's plenty here for all of us. Today we're discussing how to analyze opportunities and situations that are, that are proposed to you. And uh, we went over a situation about a uh, real estate uh, investment guru guy and what his offer was. And uh, now we're going to go over one, somebody questioning me about, you know, my program. So you can see it, flip it from, okay, this is what I said about somebody else. Now let's see what I say about myself. And the guy writes this, he says, my son and I have been listening for a while. We're scheduled for the 813 online seminar. As a skeptic on all investment opportunities, I have a question that may reflect a rookie perspective on the multifamily real estate market. It not it logical 
that your organization's success and breadth, in other words, the number of people we have, would make it hard on a newcomer. In other words, wouldn't the truly attractive opportunities naturally flow to your most senior and monetary moneyed participants? With all due respect, other than yearly membership dues, what do the newcomers bring to you collective effort? Okay, so that right there is a very good question. So let's talk about this. What it happens here that's different than everywhere else is, is that the big guys leave the small deals behind. The small guys pick up the small deals. In fact, once a, a beginner does a small deal, he usually sells that back into the group to somebody that needs a small deal. They move up to a medium-sized deal, which they might have bought from one of the big guys. And the big guys move on and buy these big, giant deals that no one else can afford. Now, where do they get the money to do that? It's from brand new people that don't want to do anything themselves. So when they don't have the energy, effort, intelligence, training, or willingness to take the risk, they buy in with these big guys that are buying these brand new deals. So in essence, the very thing he's saying that the new people don't get to the big deals is absolutely wrong. They get to the big deals because they're there with the big guys. His thought process is not flawed, right? But what he doesn't understand is the outcome of how we've arranged ourselves to break that what he believes to be a normal occurrence. He's gone on and says, I have been exposed to some business decisions where helping people out is truly part of the founder's intent, but have always looked for incentives. I'm very much like your your insight into people and respect your opinion. So what he's talking about there is me. Why are you helping people out? Well, I'm helping people out, one, because I like to do it. Uh, two, it's, it's my life. It's my karma. It's my dharma. It's everything I do in life. I mean, I don't know what I do with myself. Well, I do. I get tons of hobbies and I'm busier than heck, but... An hour a day to get on the radio and then own all these companies and maintain them is really, I don't run them. I have people to run them for me. So it's not as hard as it looks like. Um, so, I, I, you know, he's looking for that. And I do make money on it. So don't don't make that mistake of thinking I don't make money by owning all these different kinds of companies. And I do. Um, so you go on here and get to this point of, My return reply to him says, I used to get this question all the time, but not much anymore since we have been around. We've been helping people for 32 years now. The question is based on the zero sum gain theory. That theory states that for me to gain a dollar, someone else has to lose one. We don't think that way around here. We believe in the abundance theory. We believe that there's enough for everyone. We also believe that if you help enough other people get what you want, or I'm sorry, what they want, you can have everything you want. Keyword is enough. That's why all of us keep helping others. And what I mean that is people say, Dale, I help somebody once and I'm not rich. Go, once isn't enough, dude. I got 50,000 clients that we're helping. If I'm successful in life, it's because I'm helping 50,000 clients. Then you talk about all the apartment complexes, all those people that have a place, a clean, functional place to live for a fair price. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people living in those apartment complexes. That's people we're helping, right? I own grocery stores, so there's, you know, thousands of people that have a place to go shop for food and so on and so forth. There's there's just so many different ways that everything I do in life is to give something back. The guy responded back, says, I was hoping the last part is true in the number of opportunities. By God, I will make you this promise, sir, is that if you listen to the radio show here and people come on uh, to do the Tell Dell show, every one of them will tell you they ran out of money before they ran out of deals to do. That's the way it is. We have more deals than we have money. I have real estate companies in nine different states right now. We keep opening them all the time. I'm trying to get one in just about every state um, where there's any investment deals that make sense. And we just keep loading people up with investment deals. Uh, And the prevailing zero-sum thinking prevalent today is dangerous. My question is probably more rooted in poor understanding of the size of the market. My only contact is the radio show. I look forward to joining. I appreciate your response. Yeah, he's going to be really, really surprised. In fact, pleasantly surprised. I say people, I tell people all the time, I say, you know, how many things you buy and the day after you buy, you feel like you made a mistake and, you know, it was, you wish you could get your money back. Uh, This isn't going to be one of them. This is going to be one of those things you're going to buy and go, man, this is 10 times better than I ever thought it could possibly be. All right, next one says, giving back sounds like I took something that belongs to someone else or I like family members old put me on the shoulders and catapulted me. 
I don't like that. What the guy's saying is I, I, I talk about give back all the time. The guy doesn't like the idea of give back because he didn't think anybody gave him anything to give back to, that he owes nobody nothing. Nobody carried him to his success. He got it all on his own. He says he'd rather use the terminology giving because I give to people. I don't give back to people. Well, I, uh, I understand what he's saying. You know, we all want to believe that we're the benefactors totally of our own success. But the reality is, folks, that when you look at it, all the material, all the ideas, all the theories have been used a thousand times before. And we're just absorbing them, regurgitating them, and using them again. If it weren't for people in the past, there would be no human society as it is today. It would not exist. And you couldn't use your cell phone to go do business the way we do business. You couldn't get in your car and go places like we go places. You couldn't do any of the stuff we do, all the Internet stuff. I didn't invent any of that, but I use it every single day to make myself wealthy. That is the give back to society of all those people out there that are working their butt off every single day, getting up and going to work and running on the little mouse wheel or going to the cubicle prison. All so society is there. So I can do this. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow. The information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.